Welcome back. Sarasota residents voted to pony up $65 million to extend the legacy trail. The dream is for a trail for cyclists, runners, skaters, sightseers that goes from Venice now through Sarasota and maybe one day all the way to Tampa. While there's been some opposition to buying the property, there's been much more support for it. So where do we go from here? And joining us for more are John Robinson, who manages the trails for Sarasota County, Roger Norman, a vote yes for Sarasota County Legacy Trail Extension. Martin Hyde, who ran for Sarasota City Commission, and joining us by Skype, Mark Blumenthal, a volunteer for the trail efforts. Uh, and let's start with you, John. Now that the referendum was passed, what happens next? What kind of time frame? So prior to the referendum uh, being put on the ballot, the Trust for Public Lands, who's under contract with Sarasota County, was negotiating with the sellers, and they uh, signed a contract pending the passing of the referendum. The next steps in that contract are the due diligence period, where they do phase one and phase two environmental audits, do surveying, various background pieces. They've got until April 30th to complete that process. Assuming everything goes smoothly, it's scheduled to close no later than um, May 30th. Well, let me ask you that everything goes smoothly. What, what kind of hiccups could there be? Well, when you're buying a railroad corridor, there's always concerns about contamination along the rails or uh, the, way they main, the way the railroad company maintains the ground. So there's a lot of soil testing going on, determining if there is contamination, if there is, how much, and how to re uh, mediate, remediate for it. Roger, just how excited is your organization? Well, about we were this? ecstatic uh, that, I mean, we were the catalyst for getting this initiative working closely with the county, and so we were ecstatic not only with the margin of victory, 71% support is astounding, but it was also the, 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 the breadth of the support, uh, 100 out of 100 precincts voted in favor of the um, voted vote yes. So it was broad and deep. Right, and Mark, how, what does this mean for your average uh, bicyclist uh, out there, jogger and, and, or sightseer? Well, this is going to be a very, very good trail. Uh, we are ranked right now number four in the nation to uh, have the one of the best trails. And if people get out on the trail and see what the trail can do for them, they will be very, very happy. Uh, Martin, there's been very little criticism of it. You know, the, the, the mayor of Venice was a little bit more reserved about it. He's not against the, uh, the trail so much as the, against the money. Are there really, I mean, uh, financial concerns about taking out? I don't think so. Not in this case. Uh, 65 million is a lot of money, but it's spread between uh, hundreds of thousands of people. It's a, it's a 50, 60 buck a year cost for uh, most county taxpayers. Um, this is an economic boon. This has some upside. Uh, property value certainly along and adjacent to the trail, um, but also tourism. So uh, I'm typically fiscally conservative, but I think here there's a, a real financial upside. Our conversation will continue right after we get a check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Thanks, Ella. Good night uh, to bike ride, or good day to bike ride, too. Uh, temperature is a little bit on the warmer side than we saw over the weekend, but a uh, gorgeous sunset tonight. Lows to start the day off. We'll be into the upper 60s near the water, mid 60s inland, east of I 75, to 70 if you're right on the water. So temperatures running about uh, 8 to 10 degrees above average. We'll have Partly cloudy skies. Now there could be some patchy fog forming due to the increased humidity in the lower levels of the atmosphere. As far as the weather headlines read, we are looking at a weak cold front to make its way through Wednesday, uh, Tuesday morning, I should say Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, and bring with it uh, some cooler overnight readings. Uh, Wednesday's lows will be into the upper 50s to low 60s, so that's fairly typical for this time of year. And a, another system comes in on Saturday, so after Thanksgiving, things look to be pretty good un until uh, Saturday. Some showers and and uh, maybe an isolated thunderstorm in the mix. Right now, not much rain to speak of uh, on the radar sweep. Some showers well to the west and north of us now with that developing storm system over the lower Mississippi Valley. That is going to track off to the northeast, basically, and high pressure will build in behind it and clear our skies, it looks like, for the most part, on into late Wednesday and uh, Thanksgiving Day. Now, with some snow falling in northern sections of Pennsylvania tonight, southern sections of New York. This is going to be the stormy area, basically the northern New England states, as well as New York and Pennsylvania over the upcoming days, so it could cause some travel concerns. And it looks to be very cold for the Macy's Day Parade on Thanksgiving in New York and windy as well, but most of the snow will be over by then. 
Uh, you can see some showers here out to the west and north of us and a lot of clouds. We'll look for a mixture of sun and clouds throughout the day. Tomorrow should be another nice day there for bike riding and we'll see uh, a slight chance at 20% for an isolated shower or two. Those winds will start to shift too. You'll no notice that in the afternoon once the front moves through, they'll become more northerly in time and they'll pick up a little bit in pace too late in the uh, afternoon and throughout the evening out of the north at 10 to 15. So the forecast starts off pretty warm, 70 degrees, some fog around, and then we'll see uh, partly cloudy skies throughout the day. High temperatures will be above average or right around it and into the upper 70s to low 80s for the most part. Here's the GFS forecast model showing that snow again, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine into New York, and then another little clipper comes down on Wednesday. This is going to be the biggest travel day uh, for the United States, and it looks to be pretty good from Texas all the way over to the center U.S. and Chicago looking good. Even the Mid-Atlantic Coast states, not a problem as this large area of high pressure will dominate the weather. Uh, with the exception of the Northeast and the Northern New England states, they'll see snow there, which will cause some travel headaches even into, uh, looks like Wednesday night. Thanksgiving looks good. Uh, just some lake effect snows occurring in parts of Michigan, western portions of New York. And then another storm comes in on Saturday uh, with some rain mainly across the Southeast. For us, we'll see a pretty good chance for some showers. Isolated thunderstorm, not out of the question. That chance is only at 20% for a thunderstorm. 60% chance for some showers on Saturday. And the long range model showing a pretty big storm, uh, storm system making its way through on Sunday over the Plain States and the uh, Great Lakes. Well, this will change our weather significantly on Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Uh, we're talking highs only in the 60s, I think, by Wednesday and Thursday, and lows will be down into the 50s once again, lower 50s on Thursday, and uh, looks like that's next Thursday, not this Thanksgiving. Uh, cool down next week, obviously, we're talking about this is November 26th, and high temperatures into the upper 60s there, and then uh, low temperatures in the 50s and 40s over parts of the uh, panhandle of Florida. Here's the boating forecast for you tomorrow. Winds will be not all that strong. We'll see them out of the north at 10 knots. Seas will be right around two feet. There'll be a light chop on the bays and inland waters. The extended forecast then, we're talking highs pretty close to seasonal averages. Slightly cooler low temperatures on Wednesday and Thursday morning. Thanksgiving looks good. 20% chance for a shower. Better chances for rain come, uh, comes on Saturday at 60% for a few showers. We'll be right back talking about rails to trails just after this. Where to go and what to do in Birmingham, Alabama. Personalized just for you. Find your sweet spots at alabama.travel slash sweet spot. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases, a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. Over 3,000 new vehicles, over 1,000 used vehicles on clearance right now at Gettle.com. And Gettle Pre-Owned Certified Plus means buying with peace of mind. Get credit help, fast cash for your car, and year-end clearance prices right now at a Gettle dealership near you. Gettle's got it. At Gettle.com. The thought of my son growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes 
No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can too. For free help, visit cdc.gov slash tips. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Welcome back. We are talking about Rails to Trails, and joining us for more are John Robinson, who manages, manages the trails for Sarasota County, Roger Norman, president of the Friends of Legacy Trails, Martin Hyde, who ran for Sarasota City Commission, and joining us by Skype, Mark Blumenthal, a volunteer for the trail efforts. Uh, and John, let me start with you again. What is the process once uh, the closing takes place and you have the property in hand in terms of converting it from what it is today to what the rest of us would like to ride and cycle on and so forth? So as soon as the referendum passed, a team of county employees got uh, started working on the planning schedules. Uh, we'd already had a rough idea. We have what we consider an aggressive schedule to have people riding the trail by December of 2024. Um, that's a lot of, there's a lot involved with putting this together like with, with the, the planning, the engineering, the design. We're still applying for matching grants from the state of Florida and from the fe uh, federal uh, government. We passed a $65 million bond, but it was an up to $65 million with the idea that we're going to try and get as much of other people's money as we can invested back into Sarasota County. And uh, Roger, when, when you're talking about now converting it into a, a trail that you know, a whole bunch of people could, could utilize, what are we talking about in terms of cyclists and, and joggers and, and so forth? Well, right now, the trail, which doesn't connect to the two major population centers, downtown Sarasota and Northport, we already have almost a quarter million users per year, which is an astounding number. So we expect that number to simply explode once we connect to the city, downtown Sarasota. And we need to remember that the referendum was not just to go to downtown Sarasota, it was also better connect to the city of Northport. So that is that angle, and this completed trail will, uh, for the first time, connect South County to North County. So that's an important ingredient. And Mark, what's important, I, I think, for people to understand, and, and personal, uh, a point of personal privilege here, my wife and I have been starting going on these, these large, you know, 20-mile bike rides throughout the entire Tampa Bay area, looking at different trails to go on. In many cases, though, it's limiting because some of these trails are only 10 miles and uh, you get to a point that you, you have to turn around. The, it's the end of the trail, so to speak. The idea here, if, correct me if I'm wrong, is to, to get past all that, correct? Yes. Uh, let, me, let me say this. Uh, for many years, we've been working on this trail. I was the chairman of the Bicycle Pedestrian Trails Committee for the County of Sarasota for many years. And in those years, we discussed how the trail would benefit the citizens of the county uh, heading north from where we are now. We, we will need, just so you know, uh, six bridges. Uh, Clark Road, Proctor, Wilkinson, B Ridge, Bay Vista, and Beneva Road. The width of the new trail I've recommended will be 15 feet wide. There'll be approximately 475,000 people using the trail from Clark to downtown Payne Park, which will put an overall average of 700,000 people per year using the trail. Northport has put together a package of $2 million to connect the trail from uh, Laurel Road. All right, All right Mark, let me, right, let me jump in there just for a second because we have to take a commercial break. Obviously, we are just getting warmed up on our conversation. We'll be right back in a minute with more on Rails and Trail. Stay with us. Helping families with mesothelioma is all we do. My firm has been offering a free book on mesothelioma for over 10 years. Since that time, hundreds of people with mesothelioma have trusted us to represent them. We have local offices throughout the U.S. and there is no risk to you. Mesothelioma really is all we do. 
call us at 1-800-485-6000. That's 1-800-485-6000. Or go to mesoonlylaw.com. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through True Stage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call. And you cannot be turned down for any reason. Even if you have health problems or are living on a fixed income, guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance policies could work for you with prices starting at less than 32 cents a day. That's as low as $9.40 a month. True Stage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. My mom didn't have life insurance and the cost all fell on me. And that's expensive. We're, we're still paying for yeah, that. Yeah, we're still paying for that. Call 1-800-218-4991. Now, in one phone call, you can help prepare your family with protection amounts up to $25,000. There are no medical tests or health questions. And remember, you cannot be turned down for any reason. In fact, True Stage policies are already protecting over 18 million Americans and rates are designed to be affordable, starting at less than 32 cents a day. That's as low as 940 a month. Plus, your price will never increase and your benefit will never decrease. When I leave, everything will be taken care of for them. Call 1-800-218-4991. Now, for a free, no obligation quote, True Stage offers plans to fit your budget with prices starting at less than 32 cents a day. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through True Stage. Call 1 800 218 4991 now. Keep up with the Sun Coast. Watch your favorite ABC7 shows on your streaming device. You're watching ABC7 News at 7.30. Welcome back. We are talking about rails to trails and joining us for more are John Robinson, who manages the trails for the county. Roger Norman, of president of the Friends of Legacy Trails. Martin Hyde, who ran for Sarasota City Commission. And joining us by Skype, Mark Blumenthal, a volunteer with the trail efforts. Uh, and uh, John, it, it appears from what I'm reading about how this is being planned out, you're trying to offer a lot of different things uh, to a lot of different people who would utilize the, 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 the trails. And just my own observation, that is not always uh, in other communities around the Tampa Bay area. Uh, it doesn't seem like there is a, a, as many things being offered on those trails, even the newer ones that that you're trying to or to uh, to, to put in here. Well, I think that the things are changing in the rails to trails. I think people are looking for more things to do, not only using the trail to get from point A to point B, but things to do along the trail. So scenic vistas, perhaps some exercise or fitness equipment along the trail, different ways to activate the property. And so you're not just using the 15 feet down the center of the trail corridor, you're using all the property that the community's invested in. Is the idea to, to provide a place where a serious cyclists can uh, do what they do and, and some of them go on like 100 mile rides but also the casual uh, cyclists and so forth the, the, the legacy trail that's open right now is more attractive to the cyclists that want to go the long distances because there's fewer road crossings but the trail has a 15 mile an hour speed limit and the, the serious cyclists that want to get out there and, and ride in pace lines and go really fast go much faster than that so they're using the bike lanes on the roads in, in most cases the extension as it goes into downtown Sarasota will cross 12 different streets. 
So when you're stopping and starting, that's gonna discourage the serious cyclists, but it's gonna encourage the families to give them a place to ride and recreate away from cars. Uh, and let me suggest yeah. that that is uh, the typical current legacy trail rider is not the triathlete who's trying to create a, you know, a record uh, pace, but more of the, the out for enjoyment, uh, out for uh, in, just enjoying the ride. And so they're, they're the typical slow rider. We rarely see triathletes on the, on the trail. Well, maybe not triathletes, but I, I see a mixture of both. Uh, the real, the, the serious cyclists out there and then uh, folks like my wife and I are, who are trying to get in a little bit of exercise who may not always be interested in uh, the city streets, uh, which you know get very, very crowded and so forth. So it's a multi-use trail, so we want to encourage people, whatever their ability is, to enjoy the trail and be courteous to all trail users, whether they're cycling, whether they're walking, whether they're um, out to enjoy uh, bird watching or, or rollerboarding or, or skateboarding or rollerblading, so it's a multi-use trail. $65 million, Martin, you said something at the outset that you're hoping that this can be an economic driver. In what way? Oh, in, in a number of ways. I mean, the first thing is necessarily people's property values adjacent, approximate to it. It's an attractive thing and people would like the access to it, much in the same way as they would like access to the water or the beach. So that's going to be a good thing for the people close. The multimodal aspect of it, the fact that some people may even be able to commute into downtown from Bee Ridge and, and so forth potentially uh, and feel safer, I, I think that could uh, help people again in the surrounding areas. And, and from a tourist perspective, you know, not everybody wants to go to the beach. Some people want to get out and have a healthy alternative. So um, this all adds to the vitality and the potential and hopefully opens our community up. I mean, we tend to be thought of as older. Right. And, and John, is, is there planning being given to just how far we could take the experience here in, in terms of creating uh, almost a, a tourism industry around this with, you know, in, in some places restaurants and other places more of a, a natural habitat and so forth? Well, I think if you compare us to the Pinellas Trail up in Pinellas County, uh, it goes through, it revitalized downtown Dunedin. And the, the, I was the, there last weekend. Yeah, the, the city has yeah. turned itself to face the trail at this point. And I think there's opportunities like this. This trail goes through the Pinecraft community. It's going to bring a lot of people into the Pinecraft community. It's going to be a, a boon to those people who use bicycles for transportation, as Martin was saying. So I, I think it's, it's going to have major impacts all around the community. Mark, we saw in Erica's story that uh, these maps that show basically this trail going from one end of the state all the way up to Jacksonville. Are we really serious about a, a future where you could have one trail that can take you from here to there? Yes. Uh, this trail is going to be a very important part of that system. The system has already started. They started building out the system about three years ago. And it's going from Jacksonville to Tampa. So it will eventually get to Tampa. This is the Pinellas Trail will be heading north to, to Atlanta, Georgia. Now, let me say this, that Alan since you and your wife use the trail. You could also use the trail south of Venice train station, which is the Venetian uh, trail system. It goes four and a half miles to a beautiful park. You turn around and come back to the train station. Right, it, but John, th this project now, $65 million in, in Sarasota County, gets you so far in, 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 in order to accomplish the, the dream here, uh, you're, you're dealing with a lot of different counties who may be more or less aggressive about what they, they want to do. You are, but the Florida Department of Environmental Protection has an Office of Greenways and Trails that works throughout the state to help make those connections. And then they work together with the Florida Department of Transportation to help provide funding to some of these counties. So there's an overall organizi organizing plan to it that helps direct how all these connections will be made. The railroads didn't go everywhere, so it won't all be rails to trails. There'll be some on-road connections. This, this trail, as you... Uh, end up in downtown Sarasota. We're looking at the connections out to Longboat Key to use the beautiful trail system they have along the key out there. So some of those connections will go next to roads, but uh, where they can, the railroad corridors make an excellent opportunity. Roger, is there any coordination between groups like yours and others in, in Manatee County, Pinellas or Hillsborough or wherever uh, in order to have kind of like a, a, 
a, a real vision of, of just how big we could, we could take the, this? Uh, the overall coordination is through the uh, Sun Trail program, which, as John mentioned, is in existence. It's backed by policy and, um, and uh, priorities. And, um, and we joined with the county and the MPO three years ago to try to get legacy trail funding. Uh, but at the time, we didn't own the corridor. We didn't even have it under contract. And we came in third place just out of the money. And so, but we planted the seed, we fertilized it. Uh, and uh, the moment that the county signed the con or before, when the county agreed to uh, purchase the segment to Atchin Road, out comes from FDOT, seven and a half million dollars Sun Trail money. So to add on to what John said, there's not only policy and prioritization and scrutinization, but there's also not a whole lot of money, but it's $25 million a year for, um, for connecting trails across the uh, across the state. And Martin, g given the amount of money that we're spending here, do you have any questions about whether or not, whether you're dealing with other counties and the big picture that we're talking about here, whether the, the, the resources will be out there on a statewide level to make this happen? Well, you know, I think they will. I think it's an interesting thing with divided country that we are in many ways politically, but this seems to have strong bipartisan support. Um, anybody that uh, wants to see people out and doing things other than sitting inside and getting out in the Florida sunshine. So yeah, I do think so. Um, and I think that the value will be in putting stuff in infrastructure so much more important. Right. And John, when you seek to create the, the extension here that we're talking about here, where do you look for ideas in terms of making it either A, unique, or B, looking at what other communities and other states are doing uh, to, for their trail system? Uh, two of the ones that I've looked at recently to try and get inspiration from is the Underline in Miami, which is a beautiful trail they're putting under their metro system. So it's land that they already own, so they're way ahead of us on that one. And they got their inspiration from the Beltline in Atlanta, where they have over 30 miles of uh, railroad around the city and through the city, and they're using it to revitalize the entire city. Right. Uh, I'm going to ask you, are th those are more metropolitan areas than what we're talking about here, though. Right. And so they're, they're not things that we would copy. We just look for the good ideas that fit within our community and fit within our budget and see what we can do. All right. We have to take another quick break, and we'll be back for final thoughts in a moment. So stay with us. Since 1847, the Grand Hotel has earned a worldwide reputation for elegance and hospitality. Now the Grand has been transformed with reimagined rooms and suites and exceptional fine dining and meeting spaces. The spa is more luxurious and championship golf will test your game, all overlooking beautiful Mobile Bay. The Grand Hotel Golf Resort and Spa, timeless elegance transformed. For reservations, visit grand1847.com. Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP is the largest locally owned CPAP supply company in the area. Is it time to replace your old equipment? The staff at Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP can show you the most up-to-date CPAP equipment and supplies to meet your sleep apnea needs, including portable travel devices and the SoClean automatic CPAP sanitizer. We serve all of Southwest Florida, giving the highest quality of care with the finest CPAP equipment. Please visit our website, sarasotacpap.com. Over 3,000 new vehicles, over 1,000 used vehicles on clearance right now at Gettle.com. And Gettle Pre-Owned Certified Plus means buying with peace of mind. Get credit help, fast cash for your car, and year-end clearance prices right now at a Gettle dealership near you. Gettle's got it. At Gettle.com. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. 
I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. And our guest joining us right now for final thoughts. And Mark, I'm going to start with you in terms of what, what really, what kind of victory was this referendum for you and those people who really want to get out there and enjoy Mother Nature? Well, let me say this, that if the people who use the trail will enjoy it and have a great time, no matter if they go from Venice to Clark or Clark to downtown. And uh, John, just how, how much work is ahead of you in the next coming months in order to get through to this first part here where you're closing in on, on the property? Well, say after 30 years of working in the public sector for Florida's environment, this is the first time I had the opportunity to vote to give myself a whole lot of work. So that'll be the, the next job secure. The next few months won't be that hard. That'll be more on the real estate agent side and the legal side and the contracting. The real work for us will start right after the closing when we start doing everything we can to get people on the trail as soon as possible. And, and Roger, what do you think? What do you hope this means for this community uh, from one end to the other? Uh, it presents an incredible opportunity for uh, s <coughs> safe cycling, uh, safe multi-use of the trail for trail users and for drivers at intersections because you're aware of the incidences we've had elsewhere and so this, uh, the best is separation. Well, it, it makes me also wonder, is there going to be any effort underway to make cycling uh, safer and even educate the public in terms of do's or don'ts? Um, we do. We have, uh, and it starts out with kids. Uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have programs where we do uh, helmet fitting for kids and we give them free helmets. So um, that's one initiative that we have, and we work closely with bike clubs to promote self so and, and Martin, finally, for some, as somebody who just kind of watches the, the public till uh, as much as you do, what do you look for? Well, I think, you know, the week of Thanksgiving, I think we can be thankful for once that everybody came together. This is a community project. These guys have been active in it. The county seemed to uh, have a good handle on it, and I can't see anything wrong. Normally, I can find something to criticize, but I can't on this at all. Okay, Mark, the time and date, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. We want to thank our guest, John Robinson, who manages the trails for the county, Roger Norman, the president of the Friends of Legacy Trails, and Martin Hyde, who ran for Sarasota City Commission, and joining us by Skype, Mark Blumenthal, a volunteer for the trial, trail efforts.